الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says the person who memorizes the quran or the person who has the quran means memorizing it if he thinks or she thinks that anyone was given better than him or her then he's wrong or she's wrong they would be belittling what Allah granted them the person who has the Quran is on top of any other blessing or any other favor anyone is got the Prophet Sallallahu also said that messengers before me were given miracles and signs upon which people huh, would believe in that messenger so people would believe when they see the miracle but for me for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it's only revelation huh? it's only revelation there are no miracles like before no physical miracles given like before at the time of Jesus or uh, Moses and similar and if we recall when the people argued with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the people of Mecca and, uh, were arguing with him he was reciting the words of Allah to them so in return they were asking for physical uh, miracles وَقَالُوا لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى تَفْجُرَ لَنَا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ يَنْبُوعًا أَوْ يَكُونَ لَكَ بَيْتٌ مِنْ زُخْرُفٍ أَوْ تَرْقَى فِي السَّمَاءِ They starting asking for physical things like oh, we need you to bring us a spring that gushes water from, uh, from it we need you to go ascend to the heavens uh, and we see you ascending and you come back with a, a book like the, the books before we want you to do this and that uh. طب okay they said once they want you to split the moon Allah split the moon they didn't believe huh? and Allah replied he said don't ask for these things because people before you asked for them and they were the reason for their destruction like the people of Salih they asked for a miracle and they've seen the miracle they've seen the she camel coming out of the rock and he warned them it might not be in your favor and they killed that she camel <laughs> now, instead of listening to Allah and his messenger they killed the she camel and that was the beginning of their destruction but at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam Allah knew best and decided there is there are no physical miracles huh? no physical miracles like Jesus peace be upon him was given many miracles healing the leper Huh? or the person who was blind or reviving the death with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the permission of Allah this was given to Jesus but not at the time of Muhammad but Muhammad was given is a book is a revelation huh? Allah knew best that the humanity now is ready for the revelation that we are ready to receive a mental thing a revelation that we recite and understand huh? because this is gonna stay but if we had a physical miracle at the time of Muhammad it would it would have been only for those who witnessed only for his companions like the people who witnessed huh? Jesus speaking in the cradle or witnessed him healing the blind or reviving the dead or those who witnessed the stick with Moses peace be upon him splitting the water right or turning into snake that was only for the people who witnessed that but the Quran came to stay for generations and generations that huh, will only recite it and understand it so we receive the same same thing that the, the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions received we receive it's the Quran it's the thing we recite and there is something very special about the Quran too the Quran was revealed to the hearts of the believers uh, first to the Prophet it didn't come back as a written thing uh, it didn't come back down 
from the heavens as a tablets. It didn't come down as tablets. It didn't come down written like Moses, peace be upon him. Musa alayhi salam received huh, the tablets written, right? But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam received it from the mouth of Jibreel, straight to him, right? And you know what? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he used to get the revelation, he would repeat after Jibreel quickly so he wouldn't forget. So Jibreel recites to him the Quran, so the Prophet ﷺ was worried that he may forget, so he will repeat after Jibreel. Allah told him, don't do that, Muhammad, because we will imprint it in your heart, in your chest. You will not lose it. You will not forget. We will recite it to you, and you will not forget it, Muhammad. Huh? Don't... Uh, rush to repeat it after Jibreel. So the Prophet ﷺ calmed down. Allah gave him this assurance. So after he finishes uh, the meeting with Jibreel, uh, then he would call the scribes. Uh, just like who? Just like Kab, like uh, uh, those uh, Ali, like those who used to write the Quran, uh, Muawiyah and so on, right? Tell him, okay, I just received such and such revelation. Uh, start writing and he will dictate to them what to write and Allah gave the Arabs at that time the skill of memorizing strong memory excellent ability to memorize almost majority of the companions used to memorize the whole revelation and at the time of Abu Bakr when he decided he and the companions they wanted to collect the Quran in one book Huh? Because it was written at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Written in two places. Uh, two, I mean, in the hearts of the Sahaba, they all memorized. And on the little uh, tablets or bones or leather or whatever they used to write on. Correct? So the, the Muslims, like, out of their own efforts, they thought we'd better collect it in one book. So people come after us in case they don't have such good memory, they will find the Qur'an together and it will not be uh, adulterated, changed. So they did collect it, but they only decided uh, to do it based on the memory. So we always rely on the memorized Qur'an. We, memorize, uh, we rely on the Qur'an in the hearts of the believers. Huh? rather than even the book. Even as of today, huh? even 1400 years later, if you think the biggest project like King Fahid Print Press, they still rely on the memory huh? of the great references to review the written Quran. <laughs> right? If you open the Quran in the back, you will see who reviewed it you will, they will put the names of the review, uh, the heads of the committee. They review it against their own uh, memorized Quran, which they took from generations and linked to the, to the mouth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we describe our recitation, we call it the recitation common in this part of the world. We call it Hafs. Right? We recite as per Hafs, right? Who's Hafs? Like the other people from other uh, narrators. Hafs is the person who is the second generation after the companions who brought that uh, way of narrating the Quran. Uh, if you ever heard someone reciting from North Africa, uh, you will find that a little change. Not in the words. But in the tone, uh, instead of ah, they will say a. What duha? We say what duha? What layl? They will say what uh, duha? That's a slightly uh, different way of saying the letter, but it's exactly the same. And in fact, the person who has what they call it uh, a sanad, right? Our little ones, especially these heroes of the Quran who memorize the Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ said, these young ones who memorize the Qur'an, they are of those الذي أُوتِيَ الْحُكْمَ صَبِيَّةِ Just like whom? 
just like Yahya, John. Allah described him, أَتَيْنَاهُ الْحُكْمَ صَبِيَّةِ If you have the Qur'an and you're young, you are like Yahya. أُوتِيَ الْحُكْمَ صَبِيَّةِ hmm? Praising you. It's just you will be together with John, Yahya, the Prophet, the great Prophet in the, day, in the judgment, inshaAllah. So, they, these young ones are our treasures when they uh, got the Qur'an. They call it a sanad. Huh? There is ijazah, right? And there is sanad. Ijazah is that you are okay. You recite the Quran fine. You pronounce it well. You have all the ahkam, all the things properly, right? Ah, but the, the, the more, the higher rank is a sanad. A sanad is you get it from a chain of narrators up to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Huh? A sanad is someone who got it, who got the Qur'an from his teacher, and his, he, the teacher got it from another teacher, up to the companion who got it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have thousands and thousands of people who have this as sanad. Until now, in, in, in the kingdom here, and in other, every country, there are people who have this as sanad. <coughs> Some places they have tens of them, some places are hundreds or thousands of those who have a senad. I got a senad from my teacher whose name is such and such, who got it from, they could count huh? all the way up to the companion of the Prophet from the mouth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how we got the Quran. I told you even the printing of the Quran, we check this but copies based on our memory. Allah said, it is Qur'an. Huh? In, the heart, in the chests of the believers. So this is important. So we don't worry if we lose the copies of the Qur'an. That doesn't mean we will, but we will not, inshallah. Right? And we will not worry if someone tries to fabricate a Qur'an and start spreading it amongst the Muslims. It never happened, it will never happen. Because any one of our little ones, we could look at that, ah, this is not a Quran. <laughs> because they memorize the right Quran. Huh? They will tell you this is wrong. There is something wrong in this copy. Huh? Yes. The Prophet wasallam said, the carrier of the Quran should have the manners of the Quran. Huh? Should have the manners of the Quran. That's why we bring him to the front to lead us in salah. No matter how old the person is, they have uh, the priority to lead the salah. The, the, the person who has the Quran should have the manners of the Quran, should forgive and should accommodate. Uh, this is one hadith of Prophet Should forgive, be forgiving. This is the one very important manner of the person who has the Quran. And should not... Uh, use anything, any words, any bad word, bad wording. Because the mouth that recites the Qur'an or the tongue uh, that recites the Qur'an should not say some uh, profane language. It should, that person who has the Qur'an should always be calm and nice and accommodating and use always the good words because you only have good stuff to give. Uh, and everyone will spend of their own goods, of their own stuff. And you have the Qur'an. So the person who has the Qur'an has the best from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the way the Qur'an has been preserved. So everyone who has the Qur'an has contributed to that. Is part of Qadarillah. That is to protect the, this book. And is serving the, the humanity big time by preserving the Qur'an, the book of guidance. The book of uh, the, 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 the salva of book of salvation. You contribute to that by protecting the Quran and preserving the word of Allah as it was revealed. It's today exactly like it was revealed 1400 plus years ago. So when my little one sits and starts, Inna anzalnahu fi al-qadr, it's the same one uh, that Al Hasan, the son of Ali, recited the same. 1400 years ago. Or Kaab, huh? or Anas, the son of Malik, was reciting exactly the same. Or Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, 
It's exactly the word. اقتربت الساعة وانشق. Exactly the same. Word for word. Finally. Just give you some interest stories about the Quran. When they collected the Quran in one supposedly book, but it must have been a huge book because it's made of leather or something. It was, they, they made it with Arabic at that time with no dots, no vowels. <laughs> in fact, if I show you something now in Arabic with no dots and no vowels, it might be difficult for some people to read because ba, ta, tha, how would you tell the difference except the dots? Ba is one dot, ta is two dots, tha is three dots. But the Arabs at that time, when they used to write, they didn't write dots, they didn't put the dots. Because they relied on their memory. And they consider it as a shame <laughs> not to be able to read without dots. In fact, they introduced the dots later, much later, uh, at the time of Ali radiallahu anhu, just to make the language, because they are now people who are not very strong in Arabic, and they want to know what the difference between Ain and Ghain, Qaf and uh, Fa. So they started making dots. It was introduced. But before that, Arabs would think it's shameful if they cannot read the Arabic as it is, without dots, without vowels. Uh, e, U, they will know it because they believe they knew Arabic in out. So when they wrote the Quran, it was no dots, no vowels. And now we have some pages of that old Quran. It, it, they are maybe some of them in Turkey, some in Russia, some in Egypt, and many other places of what they call it Uthmani. At the time of Uthman, because they made copies of the original that was with Hafsa at the time of Abu Bakr, and they made five copies and they distributed, sent one to Egypt, one to Syria, one to Bahrain, and, uh, right? and so on. So we have some of these pages, you look at it, it might be really difficult for some people to read without these vowels and dots, but it's very interesting. They wrote it like that because they relied on their memory. So memorizing the Quran is not a complimentary thing. It's an act of uh, ibadah. It's something that's a blessing that we do and we should be proud of preserving this Quran and preserving the word of Allah to the humanity for the sake of serving the humanity of preserving this word of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the good servants who carry the word of Allah to the rest of the humanity. May Allah make this country safe and peaceful and all the Muslim land and give victory to his armies. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallillahu wa barak ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.